What's up? How are you guys this week? Most of you know I was super into bodybuilding when I was younger, basically in the gym for two hours a day from my mid-teens to early 20s. And the real reason I stopped was because I don't want to do steroids. And I knew that in order to be a professional bodybuilder, you had to take performance enhancing drugs, anabolic steroids. And as I was looking at this uh, review, which is very popular, posted last week, almost 200,000 views for muscle and strength, it reminded me of all of the young bodybuilders that passed away recently. And one of them was actually featured on this channel and we even did a dietary review on him saying he's probably damaging his organs a lot. George Peterson passed away, you know, very, very recently within the past year. And I'm sure a lot of you guys remember me doing that video on him. Also some very popular guys we've spoken about, John Meadows, we did a video on when I believe he had a heart attack and then he, he ended up passing away shortly after that. And Sean Roden, who won the Olympia a few years ago, also passed away. So, you know, something these guys are doing or taking, it's very, very, very bad for their, their liver and organs. So we're going to take a look at uh, this full day of eating, point out, you know, my thoughts from my understanding of nutrition, and maybe it can deter people away from this into eating, you know, higher quality foods that are much healthier for your body. Hey, what's going on, Muscle and Strength? I'm Carlos Thomas Jr., and today we're gonna to take you to a full day of eating. Let's go. All right, guys, this is meal one. Um, here I have about- You know, not to be too nitpicky, but we already see he's living in an apartment building. Uh, which is very high Wi-Fi, very high radiation. I mean, even most houses are, but more so in a city in an apartment building. And I, I think the main difference between, you know, dozens and dozens of years ago and now is that those older bodybuilders were not in these super high radiation environments when they were taking all of these drugs. So that, that's definitely a major factor. And unfortunately, the knowledge of magnetic, electric, radio frequency fields isn't really revealed to the public because, uh, well, it would cause a lot of issues. Uh, and compromise the wealth of the rich. About uh, a little over 90 grams of oats here, about half a cup of mixed berries, and then I have 200 grams cooked weight of chicken here, and I threw on a little bit of flavor gang sauce to give it a, give it a little bit of flavor here, and that's easy meal one. Oats and berries aren't too bad. If everything's organic and you're using a smaller amount of berries and they're properly prepared, fermented, it's okay. A chicken is probably one of the worst modern sources of protein. Even if you go organic, yeah, it, beef, Iberico pork, even certain wild caught fish is just much, much better for you. Uh, you know, it's very, very high in omega-6, high in allergens, high in whatever chemicals and pollutants and agrochemicals, herbicides, pesticides, fungicides were in the chicken's feed. And, and sometimes people think, oh, the toxins are stored in the fat, the toxins are stored in the organs. Guys, the toxins are stored in every single tissue in the body in some capacity. It can be more concentrated in certain parts, but uh, I mean, these bodybuilders eating large and large amounts of chicken, I mean, it's very lucrative for some businesses, but it's also probably one of the worst things they could be putting in their body. So, yeah. We did do a video on how excess protein can damage the kidney, so I won't go too much into detail on that, but uh, for relative application, you want to have a balance of all the macronutrient profiles, carbs, fats, and proteins, because your body, your organ systems, pancreas, and liver have a certain ability to digest each macronutrient. It's not like your body can adapt to it. It's not like if you start eating only carnivore, 400 grams of protein a day in beef, that your body suddenly is able to start producing, you know, more pancreatic enzymes for protein. That's not how it works. Your gut microbiome adjusts and your bowel movements usually become larger. This is meal two here. Uh, just again, seven ounces of rice here. And then I have 180 grams of cooked weight of some chicken. And uh, then I throw a little bit of flavor gang sauce on there, smoke and poppy, and I throw a little bit, bit of curry ketchup on there as well. And I'll have this about two hours before I train. So the, the sauces and the spices and the seasonings, usually just a small amount of liver damage, sometimes omega-6 and extra chemicals, especially if you're putting them on every meal. 
He's having the chicken again, which we touched on. And I'm, I'm a big fan of rice, but you know, when you don't go organic, a lot of chemicals in it, and especially rice, even if it's organic, it can still have some downsides to it. So you do want to vary your carbohydrates to some degree. And then it's time to hit the gym. So right here I have playing is um, Jiu Jitsu Kaisen. So I watch this, I watch um, some Attack on Titan. I watch, uh, I used to watch like Naruto growing up like everyone else. I mean like, right, you see like Dragon Ball Z, like yeah. what I would have- any, any weebs in the chat, any weebs in the chat? I, I don't really watch those shows. I did watch Dragon Ball Z when I was a kid, but I'm not like into anime and stuff. However, I will say if there are any lovely Asian ladies watching and hey, you guys wanna, you know, maybe uh, anime and chill or however you say it, I'm 100% I'm down. I am more than down. That is actually on the list of things I would rather do outside of attending some sort of Spanish Latina dance festival. Got me interested in Dragon Ball Z is that they're always training, right? And they're training to get better. So like, that kind of like go to me as a kid. I was like, oh man, like one-handed push-ups. I want to do, I want to try some one-handed push-ups. So I would like do push, try to do like one-handed push-ups or, you know, I'm like, man, they're training with weights. I mean, this guy probably has a hard time wiping his ass with that much muscle, but like, let's. Let me try. I want to get into weights. And uh, it kind of like inspired me to get in at that and like comics as well. Cause I used to read a lot of comics as I was growing up. Um, kind of got me into, you know, the, 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 the training and like wanted to like kind of, you know, get better physically and everything like that. So yeah, anime definitely inspired me to train and like uh, kind of build my physique up. Chicken and rice is, is like the go-to meal because next to like fish, it like digests really easily. So yeah, I'm like, it's a simple meal, easy to cook, easy to put together. So I'm like, chicken and rice is the way to go. Yeah, I mean, even fish, tilap, I mean, Sometimes farm race fish like tilapia and certain salmon is really, really, really horrendous for you. But I think wild caught cod is a pretty safe bet compared to what a lot of these bodybuilders are eating. All cod is wild caught. So they don't really farm it's race cod. Uh, 1 p.m. and we're going to go train around like 1.30, maybe a little bit past 1.30. And I'm going to do my pre-workout shake. What it generally consists of is uh, 20 ounces of Gatorade, uh, Glacier Cherry. And I'll do 25 grams of um, protein from Collagen Two Ways, Project 80's protein blend. Um, and then I'll do a banana with that and I'll throw in some uh, creatine and EAAs. Believe me, it doesn't taste as bad as it sounds. Gatorade and protein. I mean, the main concern with Gatorade is what quality of water are they using? Probably full of halogens, fluoride, chlorine, a lot of chemicals. Plus, the flavorings they put in the Gatorade to make it taste like that also have a lot of chemicals. The sugar they put in Gatorade is conventional, has a lot of chemicals. Just a lot of stress on the body, more toxins you have to deal with. Collagen protein, I've always been so vehemently against, guys. I have multiple videos on collagen. If you search Frank Defano collagen, I'll explain to you, you know, how do you get a white powder from beef? That's what collagen is made from. So I got sent an email once. It was like a crazy 15, 20 step process of bleaching and solvents and chemicals. Do not consume collagen powders, especially these supplements. You want to get a collagen broth, a bone broth, oxtail soup we did the other day. That's a perfect example of what this guy should be eating as opposed to poisoning himself. And then if he puts um, amino acids or pre-workout, other chemicals, th those are also pretty bad for you from the chemicals pr perspective. And they also have to be processed by your organs. I will say what can be additional is some of these pre-workouts do have nitric oxide and the chemicals that are used in those pre-workouts or really just pre-workouts in general, are very high in oxalates and very bad for the kidneys. So you want to stay away from that. I I've said it before, I was going to make a natural pre-workout supplement, but I decided against it because I don't think it's something that's healthy, something you should take. We also did a video on creatine. I don't know. I'm assuming some of these products also have creatine in them. Another thing that's stressing your organs. So I do a little over uh, one scoop. Does anyone else for, always forget where they park? It's gonna be a gamble. We'll see. Really forget? I always forget. It's probably that one. 
Damn. <laughs> it's not, it's not right. And when people are in high radiation environments, I mean, 99% of the population now is in a high radiation environment. The biggest thing you'll notice is you'll like forget what you were thinking about. You'll lose your train of thought a lot. And it even happens to me because the magnetic field, especially from power lines, can do that. All right, so he's doing a little bit of training. We're just going to skip through that. So we just finished our back workout, and I'm going to have my post-workout shake of 25 grams of protein from collagen two ways, and then I'll head home and I'll have another post-workout shake. The post-post-workout shake. Yeah, so I have the protein first, and then about 15, 20 minutes later, I'll have the carbs. A lot of health issues come from people eating too much protein, especially on these carnivore keto diets. I get an email at least once or twice a week about people asking me, you know, Frank, is your beef fresh frozen? Is it high in histamine? And I say, yeah, we have, you know, local Angus beef package that, that fits those requirements. But if you cannot eat anything besides super fresh beef, <laughs> it, your digestive system is so messed up that eventually you're going to get to a point where you basically can't eat anything. Uh, so that's an indicator of liver damage where you need to do a bunch of things that I've been doing in my recent day of eatings, taking probiotics, masticum, minimally inflammatory diet. And that's because when the protein sits in the digestive tract and it's not being absorbed or you don't have enough enzymes produced by your organs, it, it, there's a lot of histamine, these amines in the protein being released. And it's just very, very hard on your stomach, very hard on your stomach. Are you going to chug it like mm -hmm. you did? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't play no games. At least it's not like a crazy amount of protein. You know, I mean, I mean, the first two meals of the day obviously were very, very high protein, but you know, he's not doing like two or three scoops of whey, which is going to be like 80, 90 grams of protein. All right, guys, so we're back home from the gym and this is my shake part two. Um, and I have 20 ounces of Gatorade in here, a little bit of creatine, some glutamine and EAAs, and I'm gonna add um, about a scoop and a half of this uh, Raging f uh, Fool here, and that's about 37 grams of carbs. Um, so I'm gonna do, and I like to weigh it out just to make sure I'm exact. <laughs> so about that much. I mean, I mean, we could go into you know every single thing he's putting in here, the ingredient list on them, but the point is, it's a bunch of processed chemical crap that you shouldn't be taking. There, and then I'll have um, one banana with a tablespoon of uh, honey here. So that's about 21 grams. So that's my post-post-workout shake. We've spoken about bananas before, very high in anti-nutrients, very hard on the stomach. If you're going to have a banana, you want it to be organic, you probably want to cook it. Uh, maybe even add some salt to it because it's high in potassium. We do have Flextrose, which is a 100% glucose supplement available on frankiesforrangefoods.com. I will say that's the only like supplemental carbohydrate that I kind of deem is safe to eat. He's putting some local honey, which is in plastic, probably not raw, probably not like the highest quality honey you can get, but a small amount of honey is okay. Uh, it is high in fructose. So you know, some of you guys remember I was putting honey back in my diet when I was stopping carnivore. It was actually the Nature's Glucose product that we were selling that had a drastically reduced fructose content compared to regular honey. If you start adding like three, four, five tablespoons of honey to your meals every day, you probably will get gout. That's because of the high fructose as well as salicylate content in honey. Here we have 120 grams of sirloin steak. Um, 80 grams of chicken breast, um, about 100 grams of asparagus, and then six ounces of uh, white uh, jasmine rice. So I don't know if this guy is on a budget. I mean, having a steak and chicken in a meal seems like you're trying to save money that you can't really afford the steak. Also, I mean, this guy's apartment is way too nice to, to try to be saving money on, on food. But this meal would be good. You know, again, I I've expressed my disdain for chicken, but if everything was organic, it wouldn't be horrible. Since we know it's not organic, it's pretty bad. There are some chemical concerns and everything, but compared to what you know the average standard American diet eats, th this meal is actually decent because of the steak, because the amount of chicken isn't that high. I usually wait about an hour um, after the shake to eat my meal. 
Um, so what's crazy is how many shakes has this guy had? Like three or four shakes already between the morning and uh, pre and post workout, just dousing his entire digestive system with liquid chemicals multiple times a day. Yeah, by that time I'm pretty much hungry and ready to go. Uh, sometimes it gets to maybe like an hour, 10 minutes, but if I, if I go anywhere past an hour and a half, I'm like ravenous again. I'm like, I gotta eat. Um, so yeah, this one is definitely uh, one of my top favorite meals to eat, probably besides breakfast. Okay guys, this is meal four. Um, for this meal, I'll be having two slices of uh, Ezekiel bread. I'll toast it in my air fryer because I don't have a toaster. Um, and I'll also do 35 grams of uh, protein from collagen two ways here. And that'll be my meal four. I don't know who made Ezekiel bread popular, like super popular in the bodybuilding community. It might've been Jay Cutler, but I I've never been a fan of it. It's just a bunch of random grains combined together to make the nastiest tasting whole grain bread you've ever had in your life. So it it's, doesn't have organic. I mean, if it was organic Ezekiel bread, even then it's got so many grains in it. It's not really easily digested. You, know, you guys see, I'm eating white sourdough bread, white bread every day, just pure clean carbohydrates without having uh, you know, when you have the whole grain, when you have the higher phytate content, it's not necessarily bad for you, except, you know, they don't sprout. They don't sourdough ferment these grains. It's, it's frozen bread. It's just not a high quality product. So I'll do this and my shake and that'll be meal four. So this is meal five for me. Uh, well here we have 180 grams of chicken and about six ounces of roasted red potatoes from Long Life Meal Prep. Um, so this is my meal five. Long Life Meal Prep. The irony, the irony of having a, uh, a meal prep company named Long Life that's catering to bodybuilders. guys um, it's about 11 30 and I'm getting ready to have my last meal of the day uh, feeling a little bit tired it was a great day and a great back workout um, for this meal I'll be having 100 grams of chicken and 80 grams of ground beef and then five ounces of rice with this meal I mean, I mean there's no way anyone's body <laughs> requires this much protein even if you're a bodybuilder and when your gut microbiome is healthy what will happen is those bacteria and fungus in your stomach will actually, you know, eat the carbohydrates, convert them to B vitamins and things you need to have healthy cells and tissues. So carbohydrates aren't necessarily right, just guys, pure energy. My full day of eating. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, thank you so much for watching and be sure to subscribe below. I mean, 375 grams of protein, 45 grams of fat, 412 grams of carbs. 30, A healthier bodybuilder's day of eating. And I'm just guesstimating here, probably 200 grams or less of protein. The fat's okay. I, I would say between 50 and 100 grams of fat's okay. And then carbohydrates, if they were all high quality and decent and he had a good probiotic, I, I think that would be reasonable. So really, what you have to do here is reduce the protein, increase the fat slightly, and, and maybe have the carbohydrates about the same. But when you have the increased food quality and everything's prepared properly and you have the probiotics, you're not going to be hungry. Your calories might even go down from this and you'll still maintain a very healthy body composition. So overall, I think, you know, despite these bodybuilders using a lot of drugs, if they were in low radiation environments, if they clean up their diets, you know, they would be a whole lot healthier. And I, I really don't think the stress of having the performance enhancing drugs should take time off a person's life if that was the only negative factor. Unfortunately, as we've said in this video, there are so many other negative factors in our modern lifestyles, especially with these bodybuilders. So Thank you guys for joining me today. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you could please drop a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Therefore, you guys can check out frank stefanocom to support me through all of my businesses. We have some more products on Frankie Strange Meat this week, guys. have always had very interesting products on Frankie Strange Foods, as I said, the Flextros. And we have a whole bunch of other stuff, guys. Uh, organ supplements, Wi-Fi shielding. I'm always wearing my protective clothing underneath. So check it out, guys. frank Thanks again for joining. 
and I'll see you guys for tomorrow.